Okay, so we're gonna be doing a video on cutting some injector pins for this injection mold I'm working on. I just printed off a sheet here to basically just tell me all the lengths of all the pins. I think there's, I'd have to double check, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 12. I think there's almost 20 injector pins on this mold. So this is more than I've ever done. The most I've ever done was, I mean, I got a small one that I've cut five of them here. And these were pretty straightforward because four out of the five were the same length. And on this one, pretty much they're in pairs of two. There's one pair of, actually there's two pairs of four that are the same length. So I'm gonna show you how I cut these on my Haas mill. And then these are just gonna be video series of me actually assembling the mold and making the mold. So I'm also gonna flip you around here and show you fusion real quick. All right, so these are all the different pins that I have to cut. So we have a total of four return pins in each corner. Then all of these are for the actual cavity to pop the part out. And if I turn on the mold, you can start to see where those come into play. So if I zoom in here, you know, there's an injector pin there. Actually, if I just highlight these, you can start to see kind of where they are on the parts. You have the four return pins there, one in the center there. And then I'm also, I'll show these in other videos, but there you can see two right there. And then actually, if you look right here, there's one here and I actually offset it because I don't want it on this inside feature because this is going up against the user's face or their forehead. So I want it to be smooth, but I'm actually offsetting it over here. So hopefully that will catch in the moving side of the mold to keep the part on the left side of the machine so it can eject properly. So little tricks like that that I've been seeing on some other parts, but a lot of ejector pins. And then I'm waiting on aluminum to cut the actual cavities of the mold and whatnot. But in the meantime, I've got, well, how many, let's check right here. I've got, yeah, 20, 21 ejector pins to cut. So I have them ready and uh, it's time to go cut some. Okay, so I just propped my phone up on kind of a ghetto stand, but I'm opening up my McMaster order here. So these are the eject pins. These are the quarter inch ones. So I have five of these, four for the return pins, and then one for the center sprue. I don't know if that's considered, I think that's just considered an ejector pin, not a return pin. But these you can actually see have been heat treated. They're actually kind of colorized there. So these are gonna be probably pretty hard. Um, I haven't mic'd them yet. They should be pretty much dead on quarter inch. So we got five of those. I have a couple extras. Then we've also got, these are much longer. You can see the comparison here. So these are eighth inch and we've got eight of these. And then I also have a bunch of, these ones are from MSC a while back. These are um, 332nd, so about 93, 94 thou. And I have reamers that I just got from MSC for both eighth inch and nine or three thirty seconds. So I got to open up all these and then we have our reamers here. I got two of each just in case they weren't that expensive. They're like 15 bucks a piece. Um, but this stuff adds up quick. This is the part we're actually trying to make. Um, I'll show more of this, you know, once we're kind of down the line of making the mold itself, I've got, let's see, all this stuff I'll probably end up showing repeated, repeatedly multiple times. I've got drill bushings here and then 3 8 pins that have a really nice slip fit and there's no slop. So these are drill bushings. These are going to be for the actual mold itself. So we got four of those. I thought they were going to be bigger, but you know, it should work. I'm going to make it work. I'm going to have to make it work. And then I've got 10 of these pins here. You only could buy them in 10 packs, I think. And so I got plenty of those. So we only need four of those. So let's get four of those out. And then let's see, that should be everything, I think. And then I've got, I'll show you guys these in a second. We're gonna use collets and collet blocks to actually cut these. So it's kind of a cool process. And uh, I'll show you that here in a second. So here we got all the eighth inch, all the three thirty seconds, quarter inch, got the pins and the guide or bushings and pins, reamers. And then, like I said, we've got kind of my sketch on each pin location, the length of it, the diameter, how many I need. Mill is warming up right now as we speak. So I'm gonna let that get nice and warmed up. And I'm probably going to, I hate to 
I always swap these out, but I'm probably gonna swap those jaws out there, put in my smooth jaws and use the collet block, which is, or it should be, yep, right here. So we're gonna use this today to cut those pins and it's kind of a cool process and I'll show you guys that here in a minute. All right, let's find, I used a 3 16th end mill last time. It might not be in here. It might be over here in my secondary supplies. Yep, it is. So we got two 3 16th end mills here. We're gonna use these to cut these pins to length in this collet block. Okay, so we have two different end mills here. They're both four flute carbide end mills. I think one of these has a corner radius on it, but that shouldn't matter. And then one of these is ALTI encoded and one is ALCR encoded. And honestly, I don't think it really matters what I use. I'm trying to look, I think I use the ALTIN, the darker one. You can actually see a difference in the coloring there. So I'm pretty sure, let's see if I can get this to focus. I'm pretty sure I used this one last time. So I'm just gonna go ahead and use this. It should be fine. Um, yeah, let's just use this one. So these pins come standard about six and a little bit over, and um, I gotta cut these down quite a bit. I have to cut these down to 3.688, so something around there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a mark, probably 100 to 200 thou out, so it's like 3.8, and then I'm just gonna cut this off with a cutoff wheel and uh, there's no reason to machine all of that down. So we're gonna do that to these four because these four all have to be the same length. So I'm gonna do that now. So all I did was push them up roughly against this collet block and I made a mark. And so I'm just gonna make sure I stay on the right side of that mark. I'm gonna get my cutoff wheel, put these in the vise and just cut those off right there. Got my Harbor Freight grinder, got our mark. I'm just gonna turn this on, cut there, and we'll do that on all four. All right, so I'll show you this setup here a little more in depth, but I wanted to just show you how I check my Z heights. Going to MDI, G0, G90, G43, your offset, your tool height offset, and then Z. Normally I do Z three, um, three inches, and then what I do is I take a one, two, three block, I go from the end of the tool and where the Z should be. That's a good check, that way you're not actually going to Z0. In this case, I did want to go to Z0, and Z0 should be the center line of this collet block, which is off the bottom of this vise plus 875. So it looks about right, I'm just eyeballing it, and then I'm gonna do the same for X and Y here. Just a quick sanity check, it's always good to do. So I went ahead and mounted up that tool in this tool holder here. I wish I had a longer reach because it's gonna be pretty tight coming in here like so, but uh, I've done it before and it should work. If anything, I might have to swap it out for a tool holder more like this one here. It gives me just a little bit of reach, but this should be fine. So I'm gonna go ahead and find an empty tool pocket, touch this off and we can show you guys the setup. Okay, time to show you guys the setup. So I made this square looking pin, just makes things easier in my opinion. The XYZ is the back center. So the back center of this stepped side of the pin, this won't change. So that's kind of our datum. And then I made this the exact length of 3.688 is which what I want it to be. And then to actually machine this, we're just doing a simple contour here with I think I have 10 or 20,000 step overs there. And then one finishing pass with wear turned on. And then if we go over here, what we have going on is we have our collet block with the pin in it. I stuck it out just enough that we need to. And then this isn't tight right now, but I'll tighten it down. And then all I'm gonna do is slide that back of the pin up against our part stop there. And then the center for Y, I just touched off the back jaw, moved over to be center line on this. And then you saw I already did Z, did the same thing, but off the bottom of the vise came up half of this here and uh, that's where, or that's how I set my zero. So now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna tighten this up, put this in here, push it up against there, tighten the vise, and then this tool here should come in and just make a bunch of little passes like that and then one finish up, finishing pass. And I think I actually have, I'd have to check, I think I have stock to leave on this for the first one just to be safe. 
I don't, I'm gonna add it here. Um, yeah, so I have 10,000 stock to leave. And then that last pass, I think what I did is, or this, yeah, this exact toolpath, what I did is in the control, I actually just kept comping it over until I got the right uh, length. So let's go ahead and give it a shot. So I just ran the first pin and with 10,000 stock to leave, we end up with exactly 3.77. We're going for 3.688, so that's 12 thou. So I'm gonna comp it 5 thou on that last pass and see where we're at with this. So I'm a little confused right now. It's measuring maybe 2 thou under. I don't have a good grip on it. I'm just trying to illustrate this for the camera, but it's like 2 thou under from, it's like 3.698 is what I'm reading. And I comped it though. 5 thou so and that's on diameter so why is it it basically didn't change is what I'm amounting to but I saw it cut and it made a decent chip and you know I'm wondering can I get this to focus I'm wondering what is going on here the only thing I can think of is maybe I didn't tighten the collet block enough and it actually pushed it back when it took that cut but I don't know, because I had this issue when I cut pins like this before, it was kind of almost guesswork and that's what made it scary. So curious to see if anyone has any ideas. I'm gonna have to keep pushing through it. So we'll see what I come up with. 